Hi everyone, here is Super Chemist once again, and today I'm reviewing Telegraph Avenue, the last novel by my main man Michael Chabon, my favorite author in the world, I think at least. Telegraph Avenue is not exactly what the average Michael Chabon fan might expect, uh, not me for instance, because after pretty much a decade writing a literature that mixes like literary fiction with genres that at times really goes beyond the border and is pretty much genre literature though written in an incredible style dealing with very important very crucial themes Michael Chabon writes a novel about one or two families living in Oakland California and about pretty much the death of the record industry not really the death of the vinyl shop that's it. Now, if this sounds like a disappointment to you, and it did indeed sound like kind of a disappointment to me at first, I have to tell you two things. The first one is that Michael Chabon is still the same guy. It's not like he got straight and wrote a straight up literary novel, realist literary novel. His passion for genres, his passion for popular culture is still there and it seeps through the pages of Telegraph Avenue, which at times becomes really a Marvel comic book. At times it becomes a ninja movie, a like um, martial arts movie from the 70s really. And of course the book is packed with references to popular culture, popular cinema, to comic books, to popular literature, pulp literature, all these kinds of stuff. And you really need to have some small culture in that area in order to grasp the novel fully. The novel also deals a lot with jazz, which is something I know nothing about, and with progressive rock, which is something I know very little about. But at the same time, this is not the kind of book you want to understand if you don't know these things. It's the kind of book that will make you want to know more about these things. The second point is that this is not your really like straight up realist novel that you might expect from like Franzen, for instance unless he comes back to the genius of the 27th city or I don't know maybe from Eugenides that that kind of awesome offer. This is well uh, the back of my book of my edition of Telegraph Avenue described it as a middle march for the modern age. I don't really think this book is like Middlemarch. This is like Middlemarch mixed with Thomas Pynchon. Really, Michael Chabon went full Thomas Pynchon in this book, both in the style and themes of the book, both in the California setting, what one might say, even in the very names of the characters, really. There is a boy in this book called Titus who will start a minor tragedy. There is a white Jewish man called Nat Jaffe. There is a um, boy called Julius who is gay and who everybody calls Julie. There is a Chinese martial arts master whose surname is Ju. I mean, you get my point. It's like Pinchon with Edipa Mas, Mucho Mas and all that kind of names. Another thing which might turn off Shebon's fans at first is that Archie Stallings, the main character in this book, is, in my opinion, the least lovable among Shebon's MCs and let's face it it's not like his other main characters are all like lovable heroes and genius but I mean, not entirely at least if you think of Wonder Boys if you think of even the amazing adventures of Cavalier and Clay really it's not like those guys don't make mistakes but Archie Stallings is something different really you might sympathize with him you might not do that I didn't for instance but don't read this book expecting to I mean become a friend of the main character that might not happen all those things being said this book is Awesome. As far as style is concerned, this is by far the best book Shabon has written. Yeah, as I said, like all the references, all the pop culture has become much more than a metaphor or a simile. It's become part of the texture of the novel. Uh, like, like really, reading this book means dealing with the culture of this specific place at this specific time. It means like being immersed in that very place through all these references and intertextuality and that's really beautiful. The book is really compelling, the story is very interesting, it's much more than just about a uh, normal family living in California at a time of crisis. And one thing Shabon does right, in my opinion, is that it doesn't pretend that life features this big literary resolution, because it doesn't. Once you get over a crisis, once you start a family for instance, that's not the end of anything, that's a really huge beginning. The whole day lived happily forever after it's a lie but not because it's a bad lie because it's a stupid lie really the lived happily forever after means they are beginning these people are beginning a quest an adventure that it's much bigger usually than the fighting dragons and like slaying trolls that preceded it but coming back to the book which doesn't feature trolls nor dragons actually yes it doesn't pretend to give you a conclusion a straight one even though the book has an ending don't fear that but that's the beautiful part of the book.
At the same time, a subplot of the book, the one involving the father of Archie Stallings, actually feels kinda underdeveloped because it promised some kind of mystery slash thriller elements that weren't exactly delivered in the book. Uh, well, the ending of that part is kinda anticlimactic, but that's my only complaint and it's a very small one. All things considered, Telegraph Avenue is an amazing book, it's up there with my favorite books by Shabon. I just can't wait for his next one and I really really, uh, I mean I'm so sad because I just finished it, that was my last Shabon novel, I will read A Model World and then I'll be done with this fiction and that sucks balls. What did you think of Telegraph Avenue if you read it, if you didn't go buy it? Thank you so much for watching once again, let me know what you thought of about anything in the comments, I will see you in the next one, bye guys.